Is our hair a mess? Yes. Are we wearing any makeup? Mm-mm. Is the lighting pretty terrible? Yes. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Cause it's quarantine, baby. So I have been wanting to make splinting videos since I started this channel like three years ago and I haven't made any videos yet. And to be honest, I don't know why I want to start now because I am currently furloughed from my job because of COVID-19. So I'm not at work. I don't have any thermoplastic. I don't have access to a splint pan. And I, I mean, I do have like a small piece of thermoplastic that I'm going to, you know, show you guys, but I don't want to ruin my roommate's pots and pans by trying to make it in boiling water. So um, yeah, I don't really know why I'm doing this today, but you know what? It's going to be a great video. We're going to learn something. And if it's not the best, then we can just remake it later, right? Yeah, that's that's good. We're losing it, but it's okay. Um, so I thought today, um, even though I don't have the materials that I would need to make a splint, I thought I would show you guys two easy splint patterns that you can make for fingers. So um, we're going to go through two different splints. We're going to go through mallet splint, um, and we're also going to go through trigger finger splint. So yeah. That's what we're doing today. So let's take a look at the trigger finger splint first. Um, and I do actually have one of these already made. Um, so let's just take a look at that really cool. So that's basically what it looks like. Um, it's a pretty simple splint to make, um, and that's why it's perfect for new grads, field work, field work students, um, pretty much anybody out there. If you're not making anything for your trigger finger people, um, you should consider this because it actually really does help. It's something that when I started to get inflammation in my finger um, and started to notice that I was starting to get um, not triggering but pain in the uh, area of the A1 pulley, I made myself this splint and for wearing it for a few weeks even though it was super obnoxious and i hated it it actually helped so much so if you're not making an mp block splint for your trigger fingers yet something to try out okay so i cut out um a piece of construction paper with the pattern so it kind of looks like a funky curvy t um obviously it's not perfect which is fine because you don't need it to be my splints never look absolutely perfect. Um, they look nice, but you know, obviously function over form. So, but basically you want to have kind of like a, a good little T for your wraparound part. And then this part is gonna be the MP block. So essentially all you're doing is placing it on their finger when the thermoplastic is wet. And then you're just wrapping it around. You wanna make sure that their um, PIP joint is clear. And then what I do when I'm forming it is I just have them kind of, I hold this part and kind of smooth it to their hand while they flex just a little bit because you do need them to have some flexion to be functional, um, but we don't want them to go so far that they're getting the trigger. So that's how I form it. Um, and then obviously in the back here, I just literally wrap the ends, pinch it down, and then I'll smooth that part later. So that part gets fused together and then they slip it on and off. Wow, I wish I had tape right now. Ugh, this is really not going great. Everything's fine. Um, so it's just like a little ring like that. Pretty easy, right? So that's that one. And then again, just a reminder, it ends up looking like that. Okay, and then um, the mallet finger splint. So short backstory, um, for the first two years of my career, I hated making mallet splints. Anytime I would get a referral for mallet splints, I would just groan and sigh and just super dread it. I would take the patient back. I would make them their two splints because you know you want one for activity and all the time and then one for when they're taking showers because they can pretty much never take their splint off. Um, and it just like one would go good ish. And then the other one would just be like total trash. Um, and they took a really long time and, um, I was rushing and just not satisfied. Like I tried 
so many different patterns, so many different materials, um, and nothing consistently worked for me. Um, and then I started working with an amazing colleague of mine, Troy Shelton, um, who's a CHT and um, truly a mentor to me. Um, so shout out to her <laughs> for bringing this pattern into my life because this has changed my life, okay? This is the thermoplastic um, pattern for it, and it's... Uh, I mean, this is pretty large, like it's definitely too big for my fingers. So it's probably like a medium or large size. I, I don't know. I have like kind of skinny fingers, um, but you can make this in any size that you want. Um, it looks to me like a duck, but it works so well. This is definitely a game changer. So if you have not found a good mallet splint, um, this try this one out and you will have way better results. You'll be consistent. It will be way quicker and you will be so happy with yourself because that's how I feel every time I look at this splint. This is my little champion. Um, so essentially we've got our little duck, okay? I don't have one of these made, but essentially you guys should know the position. You want them to be, you know, if they're a non-bony mallet, you want them to be a little bit hyperextended if possible. If they're a bony mallet, obviously zero degrees. Um, and then it should be clearing the PIP joint. So yeah that's what it should look like maybe I'll put a picture of one up that would probably be a good idea okay anyway so when your fabric <laughs> sorry Whew. anyway let's use the index finger because that's nicer um <laughs> when you're fabricating this splint the little duck butt part goes on top of the finger so that's like point a because it is a little confusing when you're trying to fabricate it the first time but if you get the duck butt on top of the finger lined up and then from there, you're gonna mold that part and it's already just starting to work so perfectly. Then this back part wraps around and you get like a little fusion there and then you can take them on their side and push them into that position. Let me try and get it from the side so you can actually see it. Ugh. Paper does not work the same as thermoplastic. I don't know if you guys knew that, but... <laughs> and then you just literally kind of lift them up into extension while you're forming it. And then you'll trim, obviously this part is way too long for me, um, but you'll trim it to clear the PIP joint in the this part. So I would kind of cut this back and then I would actually also probably cut a little bit off here. And then with this splint, all you need to do, I guess you don't have to, you could see how it fits them after you've cut back um, to clear the PIP joint. Um, and then you just literally attach your little piece of Velcro um, hook on here. And then it loops around the finger and it's just the most easiest splint ever. So I hope this came through. Um, if it didn't, <laughs> we'll try again. You can definitely let me know. Um, if you guys would like me to make a template for either of those patterns, um, for the mallet splint or for the, sorry, mallet splint or for the trigger finger splint, let me know and I can try and figure that out for you. Just send me an email or comment below is probably the easiest way because um, you don't know my email. <laughs> It's quarantine and I'm losing it, guys. It's fine. We're just gonna have some more coffee this afternoon. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. Hopefully it will be helpful for you, um, whether you're a student or you're in field work or you're a new grad, or you could be out in the field working for a few years and just never come across this amazing mallet pattern. So hopefully it was helpful to you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you guys for watching. See you next time.